Hi everyone, um, last week or the week before or whenever it was I did a video on how to measure voltage into the Arduino and I did this little diagram thing here, flowchart, I said is it less than 5 volts? Yes, then connect to the analog pin and then I went through the programming and stuff. So if you've got 5 volts output from a sensor or a battery or whatever and you want to read it into an Arduino it's fairly easy, you connect it to an analog pin and then you do the code like I said last week or whenever it was. Easy, right? But what if you've got a car battery or something else and it's higher than 5 volts, then what? Well, very simply, if you've got something that's higher than 5 volts and you want, it into the, want to read it into the Arduino, you can't. You can't read more than 5 volts into the Arduino and that's pretty much final. You can't do it. If I was to read more than 5 volts into here, so let's say 10 volts, 12 volts or whatever, I'd simply destroy the Arduino. It can't do it. Um, so, if we've got a 12 volt battery or something and we want to know its voltage, then how is it possible? Well, that's what this video is going to be about. So last week I said, uh, I went down this path in here, I said, if it's not less than 5 volts, in other words greater than 5 volts, then you need something called a voltage divider. And then from the voltage divider, you can then work with it. And uh, in this video I'll explain more about this and I'll give some demonstrations on how it works. So let's get started. Right, before I explain what this is and how it works, I think it's best to first draw the schematic. So this is the schematic for a basic voltage divider. Well, it's, in fact, they say basic. They're all, they're all quite basic. So, it consists of plus voltage. Then we go down a wire. We go to a resistor, which we'll call R1. Then we go down a wire, and then a wire comes off. And we'll say it's not linked to anything at the moment. Then we go down. Then we've got another resistor, which we'll call R2, and then we go down to ground. That's a voltage divider. That's the schematic for a voltage divider. So now, how does this thing work? I'll try and give you a simple, how does it work? What happens is that you feed in a voltage, and the voltage divider resists off voltage dependent on the value of the resistors. So if I just throw in an example here, let's say the plus voltage is 12 volts. So let's say we've got 12 voltage here, and it's a complete circuit, okay? So over here is 0 volts. We know that straight away. So you've got 12 volts, and you've got 0 volts, because it's connected to minus, or ground. So now let's, um, let's just throw in some values and, and see what happens. Now these values are not to be used in real life. I'll explain why later. But let's say R1 is 1 ohm. And let's say R2 is also 1 ohm. Now, if we were to give 12 volts and we were to have this voltage divider set up and here is 0 volts, we actually know the point, we know the voltage of this point here, we know it. What do you think it is? It's 6 volts. And that's just the way it works. And we know that because the resistance of the, the two loads here are equal. So here we start off with 12 volts then there's a voltage drop here across R1 and there's a second voltage drop here across R2. And um, like I said, that's just the way it works. Every time there's a load, there's a voltage drop, if it's a complete circuit, of course. So, um, if we start with 12 volts and we have two loads and both loads are of equal resistance, then the voltage drop is also equal. So, we start with 12 volts, we have a 1 ohm resistor, therefore there's a 6 volt drop. Then we have another 1 ohm resistor, another 6 volt drop. Um, and that's very simply how a voltage divider works. So let's go in a bit more depth now. So an important thing about voltage dividers is that you may not want to divide, divide equal. So in this case, like I said, we've got the 12 volts, we've got the two 1 ohm resistors, and therefore we have the equal uh, voltage drop. So what happens now if we don't have equal resistances? It'll still work, but it'll just work differently. So let's say now we have 11 ohms here, and let's say we have 1 ohm here. Um, what will happen here is you'll get a voltage drop, drop uh, proportional to the amount of resistance, of course. And what will actually happen here is you'll get a drop across the resistor of 11 volts, and here you'll get a drop of 1 volt. Um, so, if you were to measure here, if you were to measure this point here, it would read 1 volt. Uh, so it's very useful. 
So now I guess I'll show you the uh, formulae that I use in order to work this out. Now I've researched this quite a bit in the past and I, you've got a different method completely than, than other people but I think this is the simplest way so here we go. So to work this out you can add the two resistances together there's actually nothing stopping you from having three resistors in a voltage divider but let's not go into that let's keep it simple. So you add the resistances together which in this case I've purposely made it very simple it's 12 ohms. So that's step one work out the total voltage then if you get the 12 volts input and divide by 12, um, 12 ohms, you get another value. So let's do that. 12 volts divided by 12 ohms is 1 volt. Okay, so it's very easy up to now. 1 volt. So what this means is that as it's proportional, uh, well, 1 ohm load represents a 1 volt drop. So that's what that value means. And then if you simply get a resistor, so let's say this one for example, R1, if you get R1 and multiply it by this value here which happens to be 1 volt, you'll get 11. So 11 ohms multiplied by 1 volt is 11. And if we were to make this more complicated, it would still work. So just to show you, let's do that. Let's make this more complicated. So I'll just cross out this here and I'll cross out this. Let's say now, oh I need to cross this out as well of course, Let's say now the resistance here is um, 22, so it's 22 ohms, and let's say the resistance here is 2 ohms. So we've got 22 ohms and 2 ohms. So the first thing we'll do is add them both together, of course, so that's 24 ohms in total. So then we want 12 volts divided by 24, which is 0 0.5 volts. And now if we get the, um, the amount of resistance, so let's say we want to find out the voltage drop of R1, it's easy. 22 multiplied by 0 0.5, which is 11. So we could put over here 11 volt drop. And of course, because we know the input's 12 volts, we know the voltage drop of this is 1 volt. Uh, hopefully that's, that's very simple to understand. So anyway, uh, let's move on. Okay, so far enough, uh, we've got these voltage dividers, but what use are they? How can we use them? Well, let's say we have a 12 volt battery. With a 12 volt battery, when it's fully charged, it can be around the region of 14 volts. But with voltage dividers, you kind of need to always assume that the voltage can be a little bit higher than what you expect. So I'm going to say the, vol the voltage potentially could be 15 volts. Now, a lead acid battery or a 12 volt battery should never be 15 volts. It should be about 14 but it's okay and it's safe to overestimate for the sake of the Arduino. You'll probably understand why later. But let's say anyway it's 15 volts. The Arduino can only read in a maximum of 5 volts. So if we get this voltage and divide that by 5 volts, what do we get? We get 3. Because 15 divided by 5 equals 3. And what this means is that if we were to only read in a third of this of the voltage here, we'd get a maximum of 5 volts. Um, so that's quite useful. So if we were to get the 15 volts, for example, over here, um, we've got this number 3, so if we were to get 15 volts, that's right, 15 plus 15 volts, and we were to have three resistors, which, just bear with me, we've got resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3, and ground, if we go back to uh, our old uh, diagram, you can see what will happen. So we've got a number 3 there. So if this was 1 ohm, and this one was 1 ohm, and this one was 1 ohm, what would happen? Here is, of course, 0 volts. And what would the voltage drop be? The voltage drop would be 5 volts drop there, 5 volts drop there, and 5 volts drop there. OK. So maybe you could start to see what we're doing here. Um, so yeah, the, um, the voltage drop is proportional to the amount of resistance. Now, if we were to say, over here, we were going to group these two together into one resistor, it would still work. So, if we were to say, uh, scrap that, and scrap that, and we were to replace it with a 2 ohm resistor, now what would happen? Well, we'd have two resistors, of course. We'd have the 2 ohm resistor and the 1 ohm resistor. What would happen here is the voltage drop here would be 10 volts. Okay, so R1, 2 ohm, would have a 10 volt drop. 
So if we were to put our measuring point here, what would we read? If 15 volts came in and we had our resistor R1, 2 ohms, it would be a voltage drop of 10 volts. Therefore, if we were to read here, we would read 5 volts. And this is quite interesting. So, yeah, we plug the thing in. Now, if we were to get that 5 volt reading there and read that into the Arduino, that would be fine. We could read that in. Um, and what we'd have to remember is that the voltage here, which we're reading in, represents one third of the voltage of the battery. And that's essentially how it works. So I'm going to demonstrate this now using voltmeter and whatever else. But yeah, that's basically the, the principle in a nutshell. Let's demonstrate it now. Actually, there's one more very important thing to tell you just before I do demonstrate it. Um, a lot of this stuff is based on Ohm's law. And um, Ohm's law is this, this funny triangle here, which is uh, V, I, R. Anyway, or E, I, R. Anyway, the reason I'm mentioning this is because there's also a very important issue uh, which I've not told you about. Over here, I use 1 ohm and 2 ohm, and um, in, the, in the other sheet over here, I've used 1 ohm just to show you, uh, to keep it simple. But in practice, you would never use a 1 ohm resistor for a voltage divider, and this is why. If we were to get a 5, 5 volt power source, or 12 volt or whatever, we'll keep it simple and say 5 volts. If you were to get 5 volts, which will be here, and divide it by the amount of resistance, you could get the amount of amperage. So if we were to get 5 volts and divide it by 1 ohm, how much amperage would we get? 5 divided by 1 is 5. 5 divided by 1 is 5. So what it would mean is your voltage divider um, would draw 5 amps of current, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's far too much. Uh, basically, your voltage divider or your measurement circuit or device would consume a ridiculous amount of, of, uh, of energy. Um, and of course, 5 multiplied by 5 is 25 watts, which is just ridiculous for a measuring thing. So, you would never use low values. I did that just to show you. You'd actually use, uh, well, I recommend um, minimum of 5 kilo ohm. Okay, minimum of 5 kilo ohm. So, if I was to plug in the 5 kilo ohm, let's do that again. Uh, so, in the triangle, so we've got 5 volts, 5 volts, uh, 5,000, because obviously 5k, uh, 5 volts divided by 5,000 um, is, is something silly. Uh, is it 1 milliamp, maybe? I can't, I can't remember. Let's just get my calculator and we'll find out. 5 volts divided by 5,000 equals, yeah, uh, 1 milliamp. So, 1 milliamp. And actually, that is probably quite a lot for a voltage divider too. But anyway, I recommend minimum um, 5K. Right, so let's carry on now. Let's do a demonstration. <laughs> 